Right before dawn, as many as 10,000 whites descended upon Black Tulsa. Opening fire? Opening fire. Um, there was a block-by-block -block battle throughout the black community. They would uh, force the occupants of a house out. If people resisted, they were murdered on the spot. The homes were looted, and uh, then they were set fire to. Did the white authorities do anything to try to prevent this or They'd, control it? They don't. They spend most of their time arresting blacks and disarming blacks, preventing them from defending their homes and businesses, taking them to these internment centers around town. Sounds like an early a precursor of ethnic cleansing. Absolutely. Kenny Booker's father hid his wife and five children in the attic just before armed whites came to the front door. We could hear him from the attic talk to him, said, Negative, you have a gun? I think he said no. And he, he said, Don't set my house on fire, please. He didn't tell him why. But after he left, not long after he left, they set it on fire, and we had to scramble down and hurry. And his sister, the six years old, she said, is the world on fire, Kenny? I said, I don't know, but we're in trouble, deep trouble. The trouble came from the air, too. Investigators say some of the fires you see in this rare footage of the riot were caused by whites dropping explosives from World War I vintage planes flying over Greenwood. The flames destroyed almost every home and business in Greenwood, 35 square blocks in all. We didn't have no home. Everything was burned. All over there where we live, just burned down to the ground. Late in the day, martial law was declared and National Guard troops patrolled the streets. The dead were everywhere, the bodies lying where they fell. Photographers turned some of their grisly pictures into souvenir postcards. Most of the dead were buried quickly in unmarked graves around town. But some apparently were laid to rest here in Tulsa's Oaklawn Cemetery in this anonymous section reserved for paupers. There were no funerals, the authorities outlawed funerals. There were no coffins, no headstones, no records of the burials. But a ten-year-old boy saw it all. Clyde Eddy walked by the cemetery with a friend, saw some men digging and some big wooden crates. And we went in, naturally, and walked up to the first one and raised the lid up. There were three bodies of black men in it, just thrown in there. And we went over to another crate, a larger crate, and raised the lid on it. And uh, there was four bodies in this one. And there was, let's see, one, two, there's either four or five more boxes scattered around. And uh, about that time, one of the men saw us. And he run us out. The newspapers didn't think the mass graves deserved many headlines. And the White City Fathers, proud of their booming oil town, wanted to bury the story along with the bodies. The official version, typos and all, came in a National Guard report. It said there were 35 dead, 9 whites and 26 blacks. But that number just keeps on rising. We think now that something like 300 people were killed in this. How many people were left homeless by the riot? Oh my gosh, uh, 10,000 people were left homeless by the riot. How many of those were white? None. The survivors lived in tents and shacks which they built themselves. My brother was 14 at the time, and he helped my father install wood. It was raining, as I can remember, it rain, rain, rain. It seemed like it was a rain, rain, and we had a wooden floor in our tent. We were lucky to have that. But Tulsa's whites gave them something, promises. Now, in fact, after the riot, the city's white establishment said it was going to rebuild Greenwood. What happened? They lied. Not a dime. They proceeded, they proceeded to pass a fire ordinance that said, in effect, that you cannot build on property that had been burned. They wanted to starve blacks out of the land. They made it known to all philanthropic groups, we don't want your money. We will take care of our own. And there will be no problem. They spoke. They lied. Courts and insurance companies paid some damage claims, claims filed by whites. All black claims were rejected. A grand jury filed no charges against whites. Fifty-seven blacks were indicted for rioting. And in fact, they'd put up one hell of a fight. 
In my community among those su survivors, they won the ride. They won it. You know, only, only till they brought airplanes in and dropped bombs and fire bombs and brought the National Guard in could they subdue my people. That's the view from the black community.